What's going on guys? I'm Zachary Gray and today we're going to be out here looking for some snakes. Now this is an environment here in Louisiana that I'm actually not too keen on searching. I haven't searched it too much but there sure is a lot out here that I haven't found yet. Let's go. Oftentimes, bright colors in nature are used as an indicator of something being dangerous. These aposomatic colorations help to ward off potential predators, essentially warning them that their prey could be dangerous. But do bright colors really mean danger? We're about to find out. Now there are a lot of similar species here to Florida, but uh, I haven't hunted this as much. I think that there are a lot of things here that a lot of people haven't seen. Uh, I think the more I search this, the more I'm gonna find new things that I've never seen before. Supposedly there are scarlet snakes and scarlet kings here, although that's slim to none. And uh, I'm also thinking there's some very special aquatic snake species that live here. There's also lots of really good mammal life. We've already seen some foxes here. Uh, there's a lot of like things like beavers, a lot of really good indicators of a healthy environment. The pine wood habitats here are oftentimes full of rare species, but there isn't a lot to search. With so few logs and other natural hiding places, we decided to go to the edge of these woodlands. Along here were rocks, something not naturally found here in Louisiana, but I know from experience that snakes love hiding under rocks. Scarlet! Oh my goodness, check that out! What? Holy smokes! Look at that little tricolor beauty. Holy smokes. Well guys, this here is a Louisiana, or I should really say a Northern Scarlet Snake. Look at that little tricolor. This is one of three non-venomous tricolor snakes that we get here in the state of Louisiana. And that's a fat one. This is about as big as the Northern Scarlet gets. I guess some massive ones could be bigger, but uh, that's about as big as they typically get. Nice and healthy, little bit in shed. It looks like he's right about to shed. It might have cleared up though, so uh, you can kind of see some of that red and white. And he's nice and fat. Look how fat he is. That is very interesting. That's a pretty solid, solid rock to be under. I'm glad I didn't crush him. I wasn't thinking a snake would be under that, that's for sure. Wow, that is insane. Now you can tell a scarlet snake from a scarlet king snake pretty easily on finding one, especially the face. The bands around the head look very, very different. And then the next thing you can see, obviously, once you pick them up, is that white belly. Scarlet kings typically have patterning or banding on their belly as well. Scarlet snakes will not have that, especially northerns. Northern scarlets especially have less patterning than the, uh, the Floridas. Now, I've actually gotten to see Florida scarlet snakes before, about this size, actually. And uh, obviously, it's a little bit more special to me to see one in my home state. They are very rare here. Uh, I would say once in a blue moon, these snakes really are found here. Now this snake would oftentimes unfortunately be killed for having those bright colorations. Bright colors almost mean nothing to a snake. You can have loads of different snakes with loads of bright colors and it doesn't mean that they're venomous. And you might think, well remember the, the red on yellow rule. See this snake has red, black, and then white. And that's a good rule in the southeastern part of the United States. However, when you get to the Midwest and the western parts of the United States, it's not a rule you want to be using. There's shovel nose snakes and long nose snakes and all these other snakes that have yellow and red banding all touching and they're completely non-venomous. My rule is, if you don't know what kind of snake it is, don't mess with it. I knew exactly what this snake was the moment I saw it. There was no chance of me really misidentifying this snake because I knew, I really did know exactly what it was the moment I saw it. So, uh, you know, obviously it's safe for me to pick up and this snake is calm. You'll never get a scarlet snake that bites or at least I haven't ever seen one that'll bite. They're a super chill snake, but definitely what I would say is don't go off of the old rhyme. Don't go off of that patterning. Uh, if you can identify the snake based off of that, that's good on you. However, you really don't want to be messing with a snake unless you know 100% what kind it is. Now, you're not going to see these snakes in the pet trade, and the reason being is they just don't live. They just don't make it. One of the things is their diet is very specific. There's little known about this snake's diet, but uh, we believe that they eat skink and lizard eggs a lot. It's one of their favorite things to eat. However, I highly doubt that that's what they're eating the entire year, unless they're gorging themselves all at once and then going the rest of the year without food. It is possible, but highly unlikely. I would have to guess that these snakes will eat lizards and uh, other little things. They might even eat some invertebrates that we don't know about, 
but uh, there's still a little bit quite unknown about scarlet snakes. They're a really hard snake to survey. One of the most common ways people have actually found this snake here, and I say common very loosely because it's not easy to see here, is uh, actually seeing them in the road very late at night. They're a nocturnal snake and they'll stay out till midnight sometimes. And uh, a lot of the ones I've actually heard about being found have been found very late at night, which is very odd. Uh, I've actually never heard of one being found under a rock in Louisiana, which is interesting. I'm sure it's happened before, but uh, since we obviously don't have a bunch of natural rocks in this part of the state, this wouldn't be a typical part of this snake's home. Now you see that little upturned nose there? It kind of reminds me of the long-nosed snakes over in Arizona in the Midwest. But uh, they use that for digging, they're very good diggers, and they spend a lot of their time underground, and I mean a lot. And here's my guess, the only reason that this snake is even up here is because of the flooding we've had recently, because there's water up to about right there. And I'm guessing he got washed out of his little hole or wherever he was living back there, and is just temporarily up by these rocks seeking some cover. I doubt he's gonna stay here for long, but uh, that is insane to see. Well guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to go and check out the one we did with the Scarlet King Snake over in South Florida. A really special snake, and we will see you guys next time. Alright, see you little buddy. Just gonna let him crawl right back under his rock. He's got a nice big gap there. There you go, bud. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop.